everybody, this is Gavin. Um, we're continuing our Micro Mouse March here, and uh, today we're going to talk about frame sensors. So every domain has its key sensors. You can think about the electrical domain has things like current and voltage and power, things like that. In the mechanical domain, there's velocity and force and translation, all that sort of thing. In the 3D domain, uh, there's a few different things, um, but what we use to measure them is a key thing called a frame sensor. So we're going to go down here to Simscape, Multibody, and to Frames and Transforms. And then we have this thing called a transform sensor. So we can put this in. And uh, this looks like, like a lot of the, the blocks do for the uh, multi-body domain system, uh, multi-body domain. Um, and it's got a base and a follower. So uh, generally speaking, I wouldn't say generally, uh, for our purposes today, we're going to use the origin as our base. Um, so I'm going to pull this up there. Very good. And then I'm going to connect back and just connect to the center of mass of the PCB. Um, so if we stop and run this right now, okay, big deal. It, it, it re literally does nothing. The transform sensor is an ideal sensor that doesn't have any effect on the thing it's measuring. But when you double click on the transform sensor, there's tons of things you can measure. So this is great. Uh, so we can measure based on different things here. Um, we're going to just use the world frame, but there are other options you can see. But basically, if you think about our, our domain, we have three degrees of rotation, three, de three degrees of freedom for translation, and uh, for each of those, we can think about position, velocity, and acceleration. So if we want our angular position, our, ac you know, our angular rotation, our, our axis of rotation, uh, the quaternion, which is, quaternion, which is four, uh, four element vector uh, that basically comes out uh, showing you what your rotation is, or a three by three matrix, a transform matrix, to show you how to translate between the world frame and, and the current frame. We can click any of these to make it as an output port, and I'll show you just an example. If I click angle and hit apply, then there's that. Um, what I want to do, I'll just show you a couple of these things here. Angular velocity, um, same kind of deal. Angular acceleration, same set of things. So translation is a little bit different because there's more, more ways to think about it. Um, we can have the Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. We can have the radius, which is the cylindrical radius, azimuth, uh, and inclination. Or we can have the distance, which is the spherical um, radius. To be honest, I don't see why those would be different, but maybe I'm just glossing over some technicality there. Um, so I kind of want to know, based on the origin, what's the spherical distance between the world frame, our origin, and that place? So I'm going to hit OK, and this is going to change. I'll make it a little bit bigger and hide the name on these two guys. Um, so block name. Okay. Now, uh, there's a, a few different ways that we could display this, and I want to show you a few of them. So if I go back over to the library browser, Simulink library browser, um, and we look at syncs, we can put it into a display. That's one way. So that that way, from from the uh, uh, from the dashboard of our model, we can display something. Uh, we need a PS to Simulink converter. I'll hide the name on that and rotate it around a few times. Connect it up. If I hit go on this, it's going to go a certain distance, and we're not too worried about what that looks like right now. Um, but this is, well, we haven't set our units, so I'm going to set our units to millimeters. I think it defaults to meters probably. So, um, this shows us that we've gone 78 millimeters, uh, and that's great. We might want to look at a scope. So we can see the value over time, and we can hit run from the scope. 
and there's our value over time. We ran for five seconds, so we went about 78 millimeters. Pretty linear uh, action there, we just had constant inputs. Um, now, I wanna show something else. This, we had our explicit units here, so we can actually, and Simulink understands that. So, we can actually go into display, and signals and ports, and show port units. This is really useful because then you'll watch right here, it shows, ah, this is millimeters coming out of here. And when we get into the scope and hit play again, um, it should show on the left here, yeah, millimeters is the unit. Uh, so that, that can save us some time and, and also makes the model more understandable. And you can see, you know, all the other units showed up, radians, radians, meters, and so on. Um, so the last thing I want to show you before we stop for today is the dashboard scope. So this is great if you want to see on the dashboard of the model, you know, on the, on the plane or the white space, however you want to say it, of the model. Maybe you just want to see some ending or current value. And the scope is great if you want sort of a floating window that you can resize and, you know, put cursors in and uh, zoom and stuff like that. Uh, but sometimes it's nice just to have it all on the model next to the model. So I wanted to show you, we'll go back to the library here, and there's these things called dashboard components. Um, and there's a lot of different ones. You'll remember from the, uh, from the teaser I had dashboard sliders, which we'll put in later. Uh, but I'm going to put in a dashboard scope here. And that dashboard scope is kind of interesting because it's just like, in a lot of ways, it's just like a regular scope. Uh, but there's no inputs. How do you feed stuff in? So the way you do this is kind of interesting. You double click on it, and then this is blank, and you're still wondering, well, how do I how do I connect what I need? What you do is you click on the signal. When you do that, then the signal comes up into the uh, dialog box here, and you can connect it. Basically, this is just talking about initial and final limits, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're gonna say okay to the defaults. We can change the style and other things. I'm going to pre press uh, run here again, and we can see there is our, our system, and we can include this as part of our model. And it's nice sometimes because then you can display the performance of your model right next to the model itself. Sometimes it's really helpful to tell the story. As you zoom in, you can see how it's actually changing the scaling so it's appropriate for how you're viewing it. Sometimes you have these things and you'd like to pan or zoom around in them. So the way you do that is you click once, and then you click one more time on the inside. And then left clicking and dragging will pan, and rolling the mouse wheel will zoom in. And if you want to do more things in particular, you can right click on it, and there's other options. So, uh, by the way, spacebar zooms all to fit. Uh, so I think that's all we'll do for today, or at least for this session. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Maybe we'll clean up just this little guy here so we don't have weird uh, weird lines. Um, okay. Oh, also notice that, uh, see how this um, has a little visualize symbol? There's different things you can do with that. Um, and uh, I don't want to get too far into that, but there's a lot of like hidden potential things you can do. Uh, it opens up the simulation data inspector. Um, I'm going to hold off on that just for time today and we'll talk about it another time. So um, yeah, we learned about uh, frame transforms, we learned about uh, different ways of outputting the data into, this, into a display, into a scope, and into a dashboard scope, and uh, some cool stuff you can do there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope to uh, see you again soon. Thanks.